Ample evidence suggests that protein may help with weight loss. In today's show, we're going to review several recently published studies over the past two years finding that high protein diets are really helpful when it comes to helping to preserve body composition and might even be warranted in the case of losing body fat, particularly in obese and morbidly obese individuals, because it turns out that obese subjects are more susceptible to developing what's known as osteosarcopenic obesity, meaning that as you gain more and more body fat, there's your body tends to actually catabolize skeletal muscle. So evidence suggests that obese individuals may benefit from having high protein diets. The paper that we're going to talk about today is titled Protein and Amino Acids in Obesity, Friends or Foes. Uh, these are researchers in France. I'm going to totally botch their names if I try to pronounce them. But um, Yves Bori, I believe, is how you pronounce his name. He has several videos on YouTube. I came across this while diving into some of his papers. He's written a lot about protein and amino acid requirements in elderly people, suggesting we should be aiming for 1 to 1.2 grams per kilogram of lean body weight. But individuals who have chronic diseases, such as high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, may even need more protein than that. And I think it's important to recognize this because you know, there is a big anti-protein push from the media, from the powers that be, from big food companies uh, telling you that protein is bad, protein clogs your arteries, protein rots your kidneys. But we have ample evidence to find that high protein diets help people lose weight, help people preserve body mass, lean mass. And protein is much more satiating than carbohydrates and fats. We're going to talk more about the protein leverage hypothesis. We're going to talk more about how obese people may benefit obese and overweight people may benefit from higher protein diets and much more. I really hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please hit that like button. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And because we're talking about protein as well as exercise, I just want to remind you of the novel creatine enhanced electrolyte six by Myoscience. What makes this product really unique and how it may help support your exercise sessions is that it's the only high dose creatine product on the market with electrolytes. So you get 2.6 grams of Crea Pure creatine. That is one of the only creatine products that's not imported from China. It's made in Germany. It's an awesome, super clean product that you can use before or during your next exercise session to get more power as well as to support healthy hydration. There's close to 800 reviews over at myoscience.com from people just like you who are trying to really get the most ROI from working out. I know working out takes time, it takes effort and so forth, so you might as well get the most value from your exercise sessions, and you can do that by going to myoscience.com, using the code PODCAST to save on the novel creatine containing electrolytes that I will link in the description below. So let's talk about how obese and overweight people need more, not less, protein. The investigators write, it was clearly demonstrated that protein requirements is strongly increased in class 3 obesity, suggesting that adipose tissue excess has an important metabolic impact on amino acid metabolism. It is possible that the involvement of adipose tissue, especially when it is very large, such as in morbid obesity, would promote higher protein requirements than expected if it is only based on ideal or adjusted body weight. So this is one of the papers that I want to link in the show notes just so you have access to it, titled Evidence-Based Recommendations for Optimal Dietary Protein Intake in Older People, a position paper from the Protage Study Group, finding that in normal, healthy weight individuals, we can optimize our protein intake at about 1 to 1.2 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight. But if you have a chronic disease, you might need to bump that up even up to 2 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight. And a chronic disease would include obesity. So that's important to remember as you get older and the more underlying health conditions you have, the more protein you need because that metabolic inflammatory state may predispose your body to catabolizing the muscle mass that you have. And as I mentioned, there's this triad known as osteosarcopenic obesity, where as individuals gain more and more body fat, their bones start to catabolize as well as their muscle mass. And we can offset that with exercise and higher protein diets. So ample evidence suggests that high protein diets or specific amino acid supplements and even whey protein are very popular nutritional interventions to help prevent obesity because of their ability to promote weight loss and improve metabolic health. This has been long known as in, and they provide ample evidence in this paper. And some of the well-known beneficial effects of high protein diets in obesity mechanistically may be linked with the fact that protein is more satiating than carbohydrates 
and fat, meaning that if you have a high protein meal, you are unlikely to overconsume energy. And this has been linked and, and associated with this protein leverage hypothesis that we're going to talk about very soon. A recently published paper out of Australia actually provides pretty compelling human evidence that the protein leverage hypothesis is more than just a hypothesis, more, more than this pie in the sky idea, wishful thinking that there's some merit here, really suggesting that low protein diets lead to overconsumption of energy in the form of calories, often from carbohydrates and fat. And if you don't get enough protein, you're likely to have a higher appetite for cookies, crackers, baked goods, ice cream, snacks, and so forth. And so we should be prioritizing protein. Uh, and ample evidence in overweight individuals uh, find that when you manipulate protein, but keep calories the same, there is an observation uh, suggests that there is weight loss uh, linked with that and greater satiety. And so this paper reviews a recently published clinical trial finding, uh, this was in a, a laboratory type setting where there was an isocaloric diet that manipulated protein either 40% protein or just 15% uh, protein, finding that the 43 participants in this 32-hour whole body calorimetry unit uh, found that higher protein diets are linked with greater satiety and increased fat oxidation. So I think that's really, really important. And again, part of that could be the increased thermogenic effect of protein, in addition to many other mechanisms. And I'm going to share the key points as we continue on here. But again, the protein leverage hypothesis postulates that protein intake is strongly regulated and drives an energy overconsumption, leading to obesity when dietary proteins in the diets are diluted by fat and carbohydrates. And this is the case for low protein diets. And again, this is what's being promoted by the powers that be. The protein is bad because it contains saturated fat. It contains cholesterol. If you have eggs, your cholesterol levels are going to go up and therefore you might get heart disease and clog your arteries, your coronary arteries. But um, as this recently published paper titled Macronutrient Imbalance Drives Energy Intake in an Obesogenic Food Environment, an Ecological Analysis, this was published in May of 2022. Uh, ample evidence that the protein leverage hypothesis is a real phenomenon. And people that consume low protein diets over consume energy in the form of carbohydrates and fat. And um, this was part of the Australia National Nutrition and Physical Activity Survey, kind of like our own NHANES here in the US. So if you struggle with food cravings and eating junk, try to prioritize your protein. Now, the authors of this narrative review speak about a systematic review, including 92 studies, finding that body fat was reduced with energy restriction plus exercise and high protein diet. So if you want to optimize your body composition, increase your resistance training, exercise training, and eat more protein. Ample evidence, again, in a systematic review of 92 studies finding this holds true because obesity rates are postulated to hit 50% in most states in, in just the next six years. This is important public health information. Again, the, the summary here from a systematic review, including 92 studies, finding that if you reduce your energy a little bit, increase your exercise and increase your protein, you can improve your body composition. And muscle mass was significantly increased in this analysis uh, with mixed base exercise, a little bit of high intensity interval training with resistance training. Uh, and the most effective strategy was combining a little bit of energy restriction with a high protein diet and exercise. And uh, mechanistically, why might that be? Well, it turns out that protein is very satiating. Protein helps spare the loss of muscle mass and protein has a thermogenic effect and it also improves the signaling of gut hormones. We're hearing a lot about Ozempec and the GLP-1 agonist, uh, semiglutide and so forth. Well, it turns out that even just supplementing with whey protein may increase the signaling of these gut hormones, including GLP-1, but also C CCK and others. And so one paper found that when subjects were randomized to eat ad lib, but supplement with a whey protein versus have an energy restricted diet, the people who were able to just eat whatever they want, but had a, a preload whey protein shake actually ended up having higher levels of satiety and had higher levels of gut hormones and so forth. And so this was part of this review. I think it's interesting if you want to dive into the mechanisms here, part of that could be because protein stimulates these same gut derived peptides that are now being synthetically manufactured into injectable uh, subcutaneous drugs that are very popular but have a lot of downsides. You've heard about gastroparesis and paralysis of the small intestine and stomach when people go on semiglutide or Ozempec. And maybe a, a more natural modality could be chewing your food mindfully, eating your food in a mindful state, and having more protein. Because it turns out that these amino acids help increase these gut hormones and improve the composition of the gut microbiome. 
So again, it's important to acknowledge as we sort of close this conversation here, ample evidence suggests that high protein diets paired with exercise improve body composition and weight loss. There's multiple mechanisms. We talked about the gut hormones, the thermogenic effect of protein, and the satiety inducing effect of protein. And the fact that the new evidence suggests that uh, excess fat tissue, obesity being overweight and much more, uh, can sort of dilute the amino acids and change the amino acid signaling. And that's why overweight people, as well as people of, of advanced age, may benefit from higher protein diets. I, I thought this study was really interesting, titled Aging Human Body Changes in Bone, Muscle, and Body Fat with Consequent Changes in Nutrient Intake, finding that as we get older, we lose muscle mass, we lose bone, and we gain fat. And so this is why we should be considering prioritizing protein. I know it's controversial. People are scared of protein as they get older, but there's ample evidence to suggest that as you get older, you lose muscle. And one way to offset that could be increasing protein intake. Here's a great figure to help convey this message, how protein might help, especially as you get older and to not be scared of protein. So what are the key points that are novel, so to speak, in this narrative review? Well, I'll just read them to you right here. High protein diets have been shown to promote weight loss, increase satiety, that is decrease appetite, enhance thermogenesis, increase your overall metabolism, improve body composition, such as decrease fat mass, increase muscle mass, and reduce the risk of weight regain after weight loss. That's, I think, really not emphasized enough. When people start to lose body weight, that's fine to lose five, 10 pounds before a wedding or spring break, but what happens after that is your resting metabolic rate goes down, and oftentimes people regain all the weight they lost and then some. And so to prevent that rebound effect, higher protein diets could be beneficial. They also say consuming more protein, especially in combination with exercise, may be beneficial for individuals with sarcopenic obesity by aiding in fat loss while preserving lean muscle mass. They say the quality of protein consumed, such as whey protein supplementation, can influence body weight, fat mass, lean mass, and glycemic parameters, i.e. diabetes and prediabetes, in individuals with overweight or type 2 diabetes. They conclude here, high protein diets have been found to protect against weight regain by modulating the gut microbiome and suppressing specific bacteria and their metabolites associated with obesity. So again, there's ample evidence to suggest that we should actually be prioritizing protein, not being scared of protein. Now, I really emphasize this because there's a lot of activists out there that are saying we're overdoing the protein. We shouldn't be eating as much protein as we are eating, my friends. That, that's what they are saying to us. Chris Gardner over at Stanford, many others, saying that we're obsessed with protein. But it turns out if you look at the rates of obesity and the actual uh, statistics on the protein that we're consuming, we're consuming much less protein, much less animal protein that is, compared to years past. And we've talked about that on other shows. Uh, beef consumption is down. Egg consumption is down. We are having a lot more chicken, but a lot of people are actually consuming more processed foods. And if you believe the data coming out supporting the protein leverage hypothesis, it makes sense then that if we're, we're eating less protein as a society, then we're probably consuming more energy in the form of fats and carbohydrates and processed junk food, which is driving obesity and metabolic disease. So that's it for today's show. My friends, hopefully you found this content helpful. I will link the uh, links to some of the articles that we talked about and references to support this conversation in the show notes below. I would love to know what you think in the comments section. If you enjoyed the content, hit that like button. Be sure to share this video with a friend and we'll catch you on a future episode down the road.